Happy three month anniversary, weirdos. I can't believe that this thing is still going. I thought that maybe I'd last a couple weeks and then like head back, but you know, the great news is, is that at about this point, three months, like you've hit a stride. You're not nervous about being in the van as much. You know how to kind of do this thing and it becomes, it becomes your new normal. Um, and so I'm pretty proud of myself for lasting this long and God bless my Patreon and PayPal people who are helping this whole thing happen because gas is now a dollar more a gallon than it was before I left. And it is just, there's nothing about this, nothing about van life that is cheap unless you never leave your driveway. So a huge, huge, huge thanks to those people. Okay, so just like the other months, three months, I've got some questions that you all have asked. I will update what's working and what's not, and then we will get back on the road. The van is an absolute disaster today because it's cleaning and laundry day. So it's pretty filthy in here, but it will be pretty filthy when you get in your van. Uh, I'm not gonna stage all this and sit on, on the bed strumming my guitar. What is with the obligatory guitar in van life? Every time I go on some of the the Instagram channels that channels Instagram accounts that you know highlight different vans there's always like a shirtless guy or some girl with a hipster hat strumming along smiling at shelter dog I'm like do you just have to play an instrument to be a part of this I'm gonna get some obscure instrument we need to think of one like maybe the cello maybe I'll just get a cello and and plop it out of the Walmart park and dur, 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 dur. oh I forgot to tell you in the video about the shit show that was getting an oil change uh, how the world ends because crazy Looney Tune mechanic who talked my ear off for an hour and a half uh, about his conspiracy theories, his whole thing was that the world was gonna end soon. And I'm like, if that's true, why the fuck are you still working here? Anyway, so what he said was that, you know how there's like this, the moms of my generation, millennial moms, are totally anti-vaccination? He said that that's like a whole uh, organized movement. And so we're going to have a, another generation of kids that aren't vaccinated. And then the government is going to release some fatal strand of whatever and just wipe out the planet. So that won't actually work because it'll just wipe out that generation. Um, but that's how he said the world was going to end. And he may be onto something because I, I checked the news this morning and apparently we have measles now. Uh, you know, you can do whatever you want with your kids. I got all my shots. Uh, but I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that my generation has never survived or lived through a disease outbreak. So, you know, they've, they've not seen how these things actually work. And, and so, uh, it's, it's a bit of social free riding to not vaccinate on the hope and assumption that everybody else is being responsible. <gasps> I said that. Yeah. Like, I think my generation thinks an iron lung is like a workout drink. Do I wish that I had gotten an RV? I'm going to say yes and no, but ultimately no. <laughs> Here's why. RVs have a connotation of just being huge. Like if you say to somebody and I'm staying in an RV, they think that it's like this, you know, a big setup. And so if you are asking a business to park or you're asking um, a visitor center and you know, you say, well, I'm in an RV, everyone automatically thinks that it's a class A. I don't know why that is, but they do. So it's just, it is easier to have more options on where to park and how to park and just how not to be sort of an attraction if you're in a van. Because even though I think everyone knows that this is an, an RV, um, you, you just can kind of like glide in and out of the world a little bit easier. Uh, I can fit in most standard parking places. And then even businesses, um, like there are some Walmarts that do not allow RV parking. I can still park in there and I look like a regular car and like no one gives me any crap. So I just think as far as like flexibility of options, the van is a better option. 
Um, I'm not committed or have to ever go into an RV park to fill up water or empty lay shitter. And so I save some money there. And I, you know, I just, I like that it kind of blends in a little bit more. When you drive into any parking lot and you see an RV, like, you know, everybody knows that there are people with their belongings in there. In Texas, I have dealt with severe weather, tornadoes and hail. And that was really a great learning lesson on why I like the van so much and not a big option. Now, a big option would allow me uh, a desk and it would probably be way more comfortable. I'd have a bathroom if I had like a class C. And I'm not saying that I'll never do that. You know, maybe I'll do that next just to try it. But when we had tornadoes coming through and golf ball sized hail, I had no problem finding shelter for the van because it could just kind of like tuck in, <laughs> uh, you know, somewhere where I could find a roof. If you are in a in a big vehicle or you have a pickup truck and then a fifth wheel, like there is no hiding that bitch. Like if you if you experience severe weather, you are just so exposed with that big of a vehicle. So as of right now, three months in, I'm still happy with the van. Although if this all continues and I continue traveling and continue to produce videos, I will need some kind of a better work setup where I can get my laptop out and my gear and like have a bit more space. And I don't know what that will be. Um, tell me what you think it should be. Maybe I'll do the RV for a little bit or maybe just try a totally different way of travel. We'll see. Do you have a problem with wait stations? This is interesting because and I've done a video about the fact that the van is a commercial vehicle. So I got quite a bit of feedback before I went out on the road that I was going to have to stop at the truck stop wait stations. And then um, one very, very kind woman gave me a heads up that in Florida, they have agriculture stops where if you're from out of state, they will stop you to make sure you don't have like a rogue pair. Um, so you know, I got, I got advice about like apps to help you drive around the wait stations and that you, know, you get pulled over if you drive past them. So, uh, ever the rebel, I, I found, and when I passed my first wait station, I just kind of like braced for it. And my plan was if they pulled me over because I have a commercial vehicle and I'm not going to the wait station, I would just, you know, kind of play dumb and, and see if that worked. That was my whole plan. And I drove, I mean, I moved over to the right lane and basically like wiggled the van's <laughs> license plate tush uh, at the wait station and the officer that was there to patrol it and, and just kind of braced for being pulled over and told I had to turn around and weigh the van. And I drove right by it and, and nothing happened. And then I've driven by many, many, many now and I've never been stopped. Um, I don't know why or what is different about the van versus the truck. They're both commercial. Someone with more education on that can comment below. Um, but I've, I've never ever had a problem with a weight station or with the van weighing too much where someone has thought that it would be an issue. And I drove right past those agriculture stations in Florida. And again, same thing. I like kind of slowed down, like, come at me, bro. Like I've got, I've got strawberries in here and they're not from Florida. And I drove right by and nobody said anything. So I'm not saying it won't ever happen. I just, I haven't had an issue with it. How does the van do on hills? Well, let's talk first about expectations. Uh, this is a cargo van and it's heavy with not only the fact that it's a cargo van, but also with everything that I put in it. So I would not go forward with the expectation that it's going to zip up any hill, let alone a mountain. So, you know, it's, it's not, uh, it'll get up the hill. Uh, I went through hill country and I've, I've had a couple of pretty steep, um, passes, but in general, you're going to notice that the van does kind of struggle. And so for that reason, you have got to learn how to downshift and use the gears that you have to help her out. 
at home, I drive a manual vehicle, which pretty much makes me a unicorn because there are few manual vehicles left, let alone few women that drive a manual. But manual cars just satisfy all of my control issues. So I'm completely driving that vehicle. It's just more fun. It's a good skill to have if you travel abroad because a lot of those cars are still manual. Um, but so I'm used to having to shift and I would encourage you to practice learning how to downshift not only to help her get up a hill but also you will nearly shit yourself when someone cuts in front of you and slams on the brakes there is no stopping a van fast and um, I, 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 it is the worst feeling in the world when you hit the brakes and you can just feel all this weight that is still coming forward. I mean, if you whip around a corner and there's a stop sign, like you're not stopping. Not that things have flown off the wall, but this is just a massive amount of weight. And when you are booking it as much as the cargo van books it, um, it's going to happen that everyone else, you're still going to be surrounded by idiots on the road that doesn't go away. You just see them from a higher perspective now. And you, you know, you, you have to be able to know how to try to quickly get her down in gears to at least help you out. Because even if you hit the brakes hard, she's still coming forward. That said, get used to or prepare to leave substantial distances between you and other vehicles. I never did that in my tiny Scion because it's been completely paid for for years. It's a 2004. It's been keyed. It's been stolen. It's been wrecked. It doesn't have collision on it. So I'm the bravest driver out there. Like, I mean, I will just, I will look for a fight on the road because I don't care. The car is not worth anything. This is different. So practice that, learning how to downshift. Where do you find all your cool locations? Uh, a lot of it is just stumbling into things, but I'll give you an example. I go to the visitor center whenever I arrive at a state, and I don't even know what state this is. It doesn't matter. Anyway, uh, I'll Google best places to live or cool small towns or some search terms that will get me like to the small, not the big cities. And then, uh, oh, this is Arkansas. I go through and circle them right? And so I'll, then I'll get like a cluster and make a general trajectory of where I'm going to drive. Uh, but most of all, to find the really unusual stuff, once you get there, you need to interrogate the locals. I mean, pepper them with questions. People tend to give shitty suggestions, not shitty. They, they, they give what they're used to giving. They'll tell you like the restaurant that they like and a museum. And then you got to say, okay, you know, that's really interesting. But like, where's somewhere that's like really unique to this area or I wouldn't see anywhere else or like is there a building that has a cool story and and if you if you can kind of like get them going then you could usually find um, the really unusual things next why do you respond to trolls because it's fun because they're idiots and I know that and I know that I'm smarter than they are it's like have you ever seen those Nat Geo videos of a killer whale like tormenting a seal before it eats it like that's me I just I don't know who these people are but I believe in life that you get what you tolerate and I don't tolerate that kind of bullshit so if you want to come in here and be a turd in the comment section then I hope you brought your a-game plus that's nothing like and my other female youtubers will hear me out on this one like what you see in the comment section is the tip of the iceberg to like what you get on social media and in your inbox like I some man who's sane who watches this channel, please explain to me the theory behind sending dictures. Like, has she ever written back and said, hey, want to hang out sometime? No! That's, why is that a thing? Why do men do that? That is like, it's the most bizarre thing. But like, yeah, like that is the underbelly of the comment section like there's all that that you have to deal with so i do my best to scare these people away women don't do that i've never ever heard a woman say like you know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna send him a picture of my cervix would i take a pet absolutely not here's a good exercise if you've not started living in a van 
to prepare you for how this is actually going to go because all you see in most channels is a sunny day unlike today which is gray and shitty and rainy so here's an exercise take your shelter dog and wait for a really rainy day and then go sit in your car for like a couple hours with shelter dog now at some at some point shelter dog needs to pee or poop so it's raining Take shelter dog outside in the rain from your car to go to the bathroom. Now, because you're not on your land anymore, like you've got to then scoop up the soggy turd, dispose of it. It's still raining, still raining. And then get back in your car with soggy shelter dog and now soggy you and then take a nap. And let me know how that goes because that is going to happen it is going to get very hot it is going to rain you are going to have several days of rain and that animal still needs to be outside to go to the bathroom and to just run around and then you are all going to be back in a car that does not have amazing ventilation together oh and plus you're you're instantly minimizing and restricting locations for yourself if you want to go into a restaurant uh you can't take the dog if you are gonna go i mean a museum a grocery store many of the places you can't take an animal inside then it has to sit in in the car and if it's a hot day somebody's probably going to try to break your window save the dog and call the local news station on you that has happened so i just I wouldn't do it and then I mean unless you're one of those truly evil people who lies or over exaggerates some mental health conditions so that you can smack a fake emotional support animal vest on it and get your animal into just about everywhere um, yeah I said that too which is a complete slap in the face to our military and veterans but I mean I guess that doesn't matter anymore damage report most everything is absolutely fine. The only things that have kind of cracked a little are some of the places where I put um, joint compound to seal the seams in the plywood. Those have cracked. I kind of knew that was going to happen. It's not a big deal. You take a little bit of caulk or a little bit of joint compound, you slap it back up there, you paint over it, it's done. Everything else uh, has stood the test of time, which is three months. Um, so pretty fine. I still have yet to have any moisture issues up on the metal roof, which everyone uh, warned me that I would have, that I don't. And then, oh, we should do a mold update. Oh, if you want a good time, go back and read the comments from the video about how I was absolutely going to get mold under my mattress because I didn't drill holes in the platform bed. And let's, let me take this off. There, there it is. There's, I don't, I don't, I don't see anything. I don't, you can smell mold usually. No, it is still dry as a bone and clean. Cut, cut, cut. I shot the rest of this video not realizing that the camera wasn't still recording. So the anniversary now extends into two days. Also, hi Tom, and hi the rest of Alaska State Highway Patrol. On this day, I have returned to the parking lot where I got kicked out last night by Renacop at one o'clock in the morning. I don't know, it, this is gonna happen to you, so buckle up, but I don't, when, when they knock on your window, it's like they're knocking on the doors of Oz. Like, it's not that big, boom, boom, boom. It will scare the piss out of you. So I jumped out of bed with my Tinkerbell bathrobe on <laughs> and and I stick my head out here and you know he's all up in the window with his Renica flashlight and he was and I, I just I cut him off and I said I'll move it man sorry like it's a, it was a it's a strip mall and it has an anytime fitness which is 24 hours and typically I never have problems ever sleeping outside of my gym and I say hey like I'm going to bed for a couple more hours and then I'm gonna wake up and go work out and I'll be out here I'm by myself da 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 he's like you know you gotta leave my favorite part he adds he said well ma'am ever since 9-11 we've had to be really really careful with unmarked commercial vehicles 
I'm not sure that he has all the details on that event because, at least from what I remember, it didn't involve work vans or a strip mall. Let's finish up where we were. Mold. There's no mold under the bed. Three months in, unless it's that invisible kind that has no effect, or unless I was just right. Does it get lonely? I debated doing a whole separate video on this, because uh, it is a good topic. If you were doing this alone, and not with your significant other, I can't imagine doing this with a significant other, though. I would. He would have to have his own van and I would tow him just because you have no you have no space as it is I can't imagine a couple and there's no doors to slam if you get into a fight and like that's what being in a relationship is all about so does it get lonely uh, it can at times this really depends on your personality type I am a black belt in being an introvert I know that may be hard to believe but the five minutes of conversation I get outside in the general public every day like that that recharges my batteries I'm good to go I can't stand small talk so I'm fine ultimately what you miss is the mundane is what I miss is the ability on a Thursday night after work to text one of my girlfriends what are you doing and in five minutes be at their house flopped on their couch just chit chatting and seeing people that you know and are familiar with uh, at the gym and at the store and and I miss I miss Wilmington and I miss our beaches even though they're completely overridden with tourists so yeah there are times when it gets lonely for that reason I do think it's worth it to pay for the extra minutes and data on your cell phone plan so that you can keep in touch with everybody and I don't recommend at all doing late night drives in the dark if you're by yourself it's just not good for up here you're on a road that you're not familiar with there are no street lights and if you've got more than a half an hour to be by yourself it just feels very isolated um, also what you will learn if you are not one of those van life people like everybody else who only stays in Southern California and Arizona is that when you explore the country and you get out of metropolis poverty in the United States is the norm I show you all the beautiful towns and they are beautiful but whether it's a beautiful town or a big city outside of that in 100% of all cases is poverty that is the majority and you have to be prepared to live within that and be in their communities and there's gonna be there were swaths of time especially in Louisiana where I went days without having a conversation where I felt like I could relate to the people in that community uh, and and I have some more uh, training in, in being with people from all walks of life because I worked in news but you know you are gonna be around people who are not like you and who you may have trouble relating to and those periods of time that can be lonely so yes it is very fun you will get to see some amazing things you will meet incredible people but if you if you really dive into this world uh, it is not all unicorn tears and ukuleles any updates on truck fridge truck fridge has been phenomenal it's terribly reliable um, I've it's not moved out of a four degree temperature range which is what it's supposed to do um, it does get I've talked about this a little bit it does get a lot of moisture buildup if you put fresh fruits or vegetables in there I'm not sure if the other models have that issue um, but otherwise the only thing I can say that I've learned about truck fridge is that I designed the glitter fridge to be able to move it around so I could use it as a bench and I also have the stove um, portable because I had all these visions of like taking it out in a park and cooking in the outdoors in reality uh, I never move the stove and I never move the fridge so I wish I had designed my build out so that those were built in um, and not kind of taking up a little bit extra bulk because they're not flush to any surface or sunk into a surface so truck fridge is wonderful um, it doesn't have all the bells and whistles and for anyone who is about to purchase a fridge please really think about do I need all of that stuff that these new top-of-the-line models are offering and the best example I have is there are a couple that now offer Wi-Fi 
So you have an app on your phone as if you don't have enough apps on your phone. So <laughs> somewhere between your Tinder app and your iOverlander app, you get an app for your fridge and allegedly it will send you a notice if your temperature range is out and there's something wrong with the fridge. Let's unpack that in real life. You are not gonna be like at the Grand Canyon and be walking down and you get a quarter of the way to the bottom and suddenly you get a, an alert on your phone that your fridge is getting warm. You're not gonna turn to your significant other and say, I'm sorry, sweetheart, we're gonna have to wait on this world wonder. We need to get back. I don't want the milk to spoil. No, like, that's not, you're out for the day, you're done. If if the fridge malfunctions or if the van gets too hot, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go buy new milk that night for $2.36 specifically. And finally, the big not so great news update of Casey Roman's van life adventure is, so when I knew I was losing my job, I sold my house that I had just finished restoring because I wouldn't have been able to afford it. And I moved into a house not that far away from me. Uh, a couple bought it who was not moving in for a couple of years and they needed just someone to keep an eye on it and watch it so it didn't look vacant and I needed somewhere to live. So I basically was property managing and there were lots of things wrong with the renovation. I organized the contractors to fix it. I cleaned up the whole thing when it was damaged in the hurricane. Uh, so it was kind of working out for both of us. Before I left, I asked, I said, hey, I am not sure, and this is very true, I'm not sure if I'm gonna be gone a couple days, a couple weeks, a couple months. Is it okay that I leave my stuff here and like come back to this? And they said, yeah, you know, like don't worry about it. Stay as long as you want. We're not moving in for a couple of years. So when I am at my most Western point, and I'm posting about that on social media, and it is very late at night, I think it was about like 11 or midnight, I get a text message that said, hey, we decided to rent out the house. <sighs> like, <laughs> you know, it's their house, they can do what they want, but remember, a couple of years. So basically, like, get your shit out. So I had a very, very fun 48 hours of orchestrating from the middle of the woods this Navy SEAL level operation to try to go get my grandmother's belongings and the last of what I own. Thank God for JB, who you might remember helped put up the ceiling tiles, and my BFF Allison, who you've not met yet but are about to. They pulled it all out of there, and anyway, the point of that story is that it was very reassuring to me that if this got to be too much, um, or I couldn't handle it, or for whatever reason, there was always a house with a bed and a reassuring neighborhood that I love so much that I could drive back to. And now, this is my house, and this is not just van trip, but truly van life. So the lesson there learned from me is that if you think you might be out for a bit, secure your stuff in a way where you're not relying uh, on other people to manage it because shit changes. So that's that. Uh, I am going to get back on the road and hopefully tonight we'll get a full night's sleep that is not September 11th related somehow and I will see you all later.